Ryan. What's Hi. up? Hi, how are you? Good. Uh, okay, so you're drinking your girly blue moons. Ryan, what are you drinking? Uh, space rock. Ooh. You have to like show, yeah, there we go. Oh, that's like so oh, shorts. fancy. I'm drinking a basic watermelon margarita. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Happy Hour with Bougie and Mark. This week, we are joined by a very special guest, our mutual friend now, but originally Mark's OG best friend, Ryan. Ryan, say hi to everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> With such energy. Woo. <laughs> He's actually one of the most energetic people other than Mark that I've ever met. <laughs> and we wanted to do like a quick travel special this week because we thought that everybody was definitely thinking about getting back to traveling. And we have some fun stories to let you guys in on. So welcome. Okay. Oh, and everybody, please freaking subscribe. Oh. And thumbs up. Lots of thumbs up. Lots of thumbs up. I mean, it would be impossible not to like this. So, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so welcome. Okay, Ryan, welcome. Thank you for coming. No problem. Uh, so the last trip that we went on mutually was New Orleans. Epic. <laughs> Epic trip. I thought Mark was going to die. I <laughs> that was my last trip. Was that your guys' last trip? Not uh, mine. My no, last I think. State. Let me check my calendar. <laughs> so I went on one other trip, but it was like a work thing. And it was... Uh, <laughs> That's probably where I definitely got COVID, by the way. Um, I mean, I, I, I have, I'm not confirmed, <laughs> but I just can't imagine. So I went to the Travel Adventure Show in D.C., and it's like one oh, of the yeah, biggest, yeah, yeah. you know, there's so many people there. I was like working a booth. I just can't imagine. That was March 8th. So. Okay. It's crazy. Yeah. That was my last flight. I, did, I went to Jacksonville the okay. weekend after New Orleans and Vancouver the weekend before, but Jacksonville was the last trip. So it was like second to last. New Orleans was my last trip, a one-day trip. Because <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Who were you supposed to fly that canceled your flight on? Because uh, you were supposed to fly on Friday night oh, and then fly out Sunday, but your flight got canceled, right? Plus, I got four hundred dollars in vouchers out of it. Mm. And then, what did you fly Spirit the next day, or did you fly Southwest? Yeah, yeah, I just canceled the whole trip through them. They gave me my money back plus a two hundred dollars voucher, and uh, okay. I think I came on Spirit the next day. I don't remember. I do that. It was spirit because I remember thinking like, wow, Ryan really loves the budget airlines. <laughs> he, he used to, okay. He's the original like Southwest for life. Um, dude, cause he used to, tra he used to travel for work all the time. Like what? Three out of four weeks you were traveling. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, most weeks. That's how yeah, I got so my points because I asked Mark, I'm like, Mark, I'm spending all this money on my credit card for work and traveling. I gotta maximize this somehow. And everybody at work already did it, you know, the people that have been traveling for years. That's when I really got into it. Yeah, because I posted like a, a Southwest referral link or so. This was before I was writing for Miles to Memories or anything like that. And uh, he's like, hey, I, I need to get a companion pass. I'll use your link, whatever. And we started, you know, I didn't know he was into Miles and Points too. And then he's like, yeah, I'm Southwest A-list. I love Southwest. And I'm like, <laughs> he lives in Lansing, which is like an hour from Detroit. I'm like, why are you driving an hour to go to Detroit to fly Southwest that has connections? <laughs> Why are you not doing Delta that you can get like first class upgrades and stuff? And he's like, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Wait a minute. So you guys are so close and you didn't know that Mark. So Mark, you're not like one of those annoying points and miles friends. I think this is so far back that he was just kind of getting into it a little bit. I didn't even know he was back in Michigan at this point. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you guys go way back, but obviously like as time goes by, sometimes when you move away, like it takes longer to hang out with your friends. Yeah, because uh, he went to Florida for college. So, like, during college, we didn't really see each other. Came back for the for our wedding after college. Bethany thought since I got married at 22 that Mike Kirsten was pregnant. But yep, that was in the that... last episode. That was in the last episode. Uh, being, in the, being in the oven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> being in the... yeah, so we went, like, then, then you were in, like, Chicago and all over the place and Florida for a few years. So we didn't see each other for, like, 10 years. And then all of a sudden... He's like, hey, I'm back in Michigan. I've been here for like a year or two. I just didn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're high on the priority list. <laughs> yeah, so we so we ended up meeting up at a uh, tailgate because he's in East Lansing. Um, so we met at like a Michigan State tailgate and then just started hanging out. It like picked up like it was like we had never stopped hanging yeah. out. So. Oh, that's a nice story, guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's my oldest friend that I still stay in contact with. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> even, even though he was a jerk to me the first time I met him, but 
Well, I mean, now you have to tell the story. He was a new, he was a new kid in town. You know, well, yeah, because uh, a new kid. It wasn't personal. Mm-hmm. No, no, it was like small town because we moved up to uh, uh, Tawas, East Tawas, Michigan. It's a small town, a couple thousand people, I think. Um, you guys can see me refilling the drink, but nobody else can. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Okay. Yeah, really? it's cut off because of the the really good the yeah. <laughs> So, uh, you know, when you move into a small town, the new person, like, if you're a guy, all the girls are like, "Oh, a new guy." I'm interested in all the guys are like, oh, a new guy. I hate this guy. So yeah. it was rough for the first couple of weeks. Detroit. You know, we thought he was from Detroit. So we thought he, he, we thought he would be all big and bad, you know? So you thought he was packing heat. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> we thought he was in, you know, we didn't know. We didn't, we didn't. I was, I was wearing like, I was wearing like Stussy and they're like, what's Dusty? <laughs> oh, do you know Mark? That's why I realized that you and I um, like are the same person because I didn't know that you moved around so much as a kid. I was the new yeah. person from. Yeah, we uh, we, did, we moved oh, like yeah. every four four years or whatever. Oh my. Yeah, I, and that I mean my most awkward um, new school story is uh, when I went to high school. I, I went to a boarding school. Personal choice. I wasn't like. Yeah, how did that happen? Hated by my parents. <laughs> Shot the it wasn't like a military uh, school or whatever. Um, I, think he, I think he just hated Tawa. <laughs> well no i was well okay so crazy like i have a really weird childhood type of thing like we moved to Taos, went to school up there um but my sister was like big in this national dance competition where she like competed across the country they won like nationals all the time so she my parents were still driving her to detroit which was like a two and a half hour drive like several times a week so she could stay in this dance group mm-hmm. so after like three months we moved up there because uh my parents bought a business up my dad bought a business up there so oh, yeah, no, that was later. Um, uh, it was a, an industrial laundry. Um, okay. Not yeah, as it, boring. Whatever. <laughs> they got a deli. Like a deli was a whole family thing. Like my mm. aunt, uncle, all that stuff. Um, so we moved up there for like six months. And then we ended up going back to like Detroit. So I only went to school in Tawas for uh, like half a year. And then uh, we were in Detroit. So my fit, my sister could stay on the dance team and finish high school. And then when I got to high school, I was like, I don't really like, you know, down here. Um, the, the people and stuff. So, and I wanted to be a teacher at the time, which <laughs> I'm glad I, I wasn't after the summer where I had to teach my kids because of the, the virus. Um, so there, if you went to this school and then went to their college, you were basically guaranteed a teaching job. So I was like, Oh, that sounds perfect. Like I'm going to go there. So I go and I don't know anybody, like not one person, like everybody else is coming from a smaller, um, private school, like a Lutheran school or whatever. And they funnel in there. So they usually know people from playing sports or, <clears throat> or, or people from their school are coming. <laughs> so, okay. So the first night I, my parents were like, Hey, do you want to come back to the hotel with us? You know, it was just like, uh, like you go through, get your schedule, all that stuff. And I was like, no, I'll stay here. I stay by myself. I wake up in the morning and I have no clue what, what, what to do. Like, I don't know where to go for breakfast. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing at this point. I don't know anybody. I walk down the hallway and like, nobody's there. Cause most people like went with their parent back with their parents or whatever. I'm just like roaming around. With no idea. You to stay anyway. Okay. So that's my that's my awkward story of new school. Like, it was so bizarre. But so I I actually lived in the dorms for two years. Yeah, yeah. and it was like it was basically like college. Like, but you're so way cool. more immature. Where you pull pranks and yeah. you're doing stupid stuff all the time. Like, some of the stuff is like we we fill up like a, a Manila envelope, like those big ones, like the eight by eleven ones. You fill it up with shaving cream and you slide it under the door, <laughs> and then you jump on it and it just blows shaving cream like throughout their whole room. I never heard uh, that, but I love it. Yeah. Another thing, if like somebody had a test first hour, first period or whatever, and they didn't want to take it or they hadn't studied or whatever, we'd do what you call penny penny them in. So they'd be like, hey, can you penny me in? And it was like, there's like a little gap between like the door and the jam. And if you stick enough pennies in there, you can't open the door from like either way. So they'd be like, the tutor would come find them, which is like the adult supervisor, um, would come up and find them after they missed their period and didn't get like an excuse from the nurse or whatever. And they'd be like, oh, you couldn't get out. They're like, I couldn't get out of my room. Somebody pulled a prank on me. And they'd miss like the whole first period. Oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> so it sounds like you really had like no supervision. Uh, I mean, like each floor had one uh, adult on it, but they weren't like on the floor most of the time. So they'd come through and do a bed check, but you could hear them like, you could hear like their door open, the keys open. So you're supposed to be in bed, but people would be up like doing stuff. Um, if you got caught like out of bed, like we'd sneak into other people's rooms at night and stuff mm-hmm. after they checked. So you could get away with a lot and they didn't have cameras back then. So you could like sneak yeah. out of the building if you wanted and stuff. But now they have like cameras everywhere. Yeah, so it's true. Uh, the nineties. Anybody have a car? 
No one had a car, right? Well, yeah, yeah, you could have a car, but you had to get your keys had to stay with like they ha- held your keys, so you had to like go ask them for your keys oh. when you parked it. So you no could just people people stuff. would bring like a second key. Yeah, yeah. And see, yeah. I'm just comparing so, it to college dorm life, which was very different. Different different ranks. How to sneak in the Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So like, uh, what was the other weird things? Like, oh, if you were like out, if you wanted to leave the the campus, like after 7 p.m., you had to use a thing called a per, which you'd earn from like, you'd get so many as you get become an upperclassman, you get more of them. And then if you did something bad, like if your bed wasn't like made or whatever, you'd lose one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like all this stuff. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you'd have to use one if or if you want, they had study hall where you had to like go sit in a room for like an hour and do your homework and stuff. You could use one to skip that. So you had to do so many. And it all was based on like your grades and what level, like if you were a, a freshman, a sophomore or a junior or whatever. Um, so I did that for two years. And then for the next two years, I lived in my own apartment. What? I didn't know that. Mark, didn't I go to your prom or one of your? Yeah, teams? you did. You went to my prom. I think I've been to your school. I think I like parked in the parking lot. I do. Yeah. Yeah, you hung out. You hung out there a couple times because it was only like an hour uh, <laughs> drive. So, wait, is that so? When did you meet Kirsten? At in high school, I, who's my wife? Um, yeah, she she was going to school there too. She didn't dorm. She lived like twenty minutes away, so she she just drove to school. What we call a townie, um, <laughs> which was like most of the people. <laughs> which is funny because yeah, because we never had like a snow day or anything because like seventy five percent of the school was in the dorm, so. Like they'd be like, hey, if I can, if the president can make it to school, which he lived like a block away, he's like, your school's happening. I think we had like one day that was canceled because like we lost power. So, okay, so that really sucks because isn't that like that's the best part of school? I think is like snow days and. Oh wow! I don't <laughs> ever even visited that apartment. I don't think so. Okay, so in the town, like my my grandparents had bought a building. Um, like a, a dumpy building that they fixed up. They got like it for like dirt cheap. And it was like a couple miles from the school and it had uh, like four or five apartments. And then they had their deli. This is where the deli comes in. So they had a deli underneath. Um, and, and I think like my aunt salon was in the building too. So I got my haircut, I got my free food all like right there. So they had uh, one apartment and my mom was helping out, you know, with the deli and they're opening up extra ones. Like they're opening up, I think they opened up like three or four at one time. Um, so she was there, you know, like half the week back and forth or whatever between the house and stuff. So she had an apartment there. And then there was like a, a an apartment that they used to have for my great grandmother before she passed away. Like, so they could keep an eye on her, which was basically like a studio apartment. So they just kind of put me in there. And half the time I didn't have anybody around. around. That's so cool. So you didn't have roommates you were on your own? Yeah, I was on my own. Yeah. So like, like my mom would be in it and be there like half the time, but half the time, it was just me, and I regret how little I took advantage of that opportunity now. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, and weren't you dating your wife at the time, or no? Yeah, I was, yeah. So, you, I mean, you were probably slightly taking advantage of it. Not really. You are the most high school kids. Sorry. <laughs> no, because, I mean, like, she would, she would go home after school, whatever, you know, like, she'd get picked up right after school and stuff, so we didn't really get to hang out much after school. So, I basically, even though I didn't live in the dorms, um, I would end up hanging out at the dorms most nights. Like I'd go over there after school. I'd just go up to like my friends' rooms and stuff and hang out or hang out in the uh, commons area is what it's called, like where they had TVs and stuff. Um, and then I'd just go home like in the evening for dinner or whatever. Usually pick up fast food on the way home. Yeah. I mean, if, if anybody under 18 or even like 22, 23 is watching this, this is your time to eat whatever the frig you want. Do oh, yeah. <laughs> as soon as you have, as soon as you hit like 30, 30, 32, your metabolism dies. Ryan's is still alive and kicking, but everybody else is, that I know is, has died. Not for but, now, but now you worry about your health, right? So like, it's not even like you like go balls to the wall every time you eat or do you? No. Me? Yeah, Ryan. Uh, no, no, I, I, I eat pretty healthy. I just, uh, even if I do go off the, off the rails, it doesn't really affect my weight. I just feel like. Yeah, there's that too. <laughs> it's, it's a nightmare for women. It's 25. Mark says it's like 30, 32 for Ryan, what happened? Did a dog come in? Dog came in. Yep. He's got, he's got two dogs. Well, you, yeah, you got, yeah, because I got don't a new know one, right? Dogs. I live with two dogs. Sure. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'll be right back. You have two dogs. Show like us him. the dog. Can you pick it up? Oh, he's gone now. He's a cute. Oh. Dog. I got him from my cousin. He was a seven-year-old dog. My cousin travels for work, and he couldn't take care of him anymore. So it's a perfect dog. Well-trained, behaved, already like my cousin did all the work, and then. Yeah. Got him. 
for free. It was crazy. Actually, I got a snowboard out of it. He's like, thanks for taking my dog. So he gave me his dog and that snowboard. Oh, wow. Okay, so you know what's really funny is that you said he gave it to me for free. So I'm just curious, like, how do you think people get, like, dogs that other people don't want? <laughs> I feel like you should pay for a, a really well-trained dog that you know is vetted and is going to be super well-behaved. <laughs> Don't you think? I mean, people pay thousands of dollars for purebred puppies. They have no idea if they're going to turn out well. Let me tell you something. So I don't, you obviously don't watch all of my episodes, but um, that's my thing. Adopt, don't shop. Hashtag adopt, don't shop. Yeah, yeah. I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, as long as I get a snowboard too. It's great. Because <laughs> <laughs> he said he gave it to me. It's for not like I negotiated the snowboard. He just gave it to me. He sells snowboards. It was. It didn't cost him anything. I well, they had a they had a dog. Sorry. Jo how, how how long did how old was Jojo? Nineteen. The like oh, the best dog ever. She was best a dog ever. She was like a forty five pound dog. So. Aww. How big is this one? He's a Jack Russell Terrier slash Whippet, so he's smaller. Jojo used to sleep on my legs when I passed out on their couch after a night of drinking. <laughs> Jojo sounds like a sweetie. Wait, uh, I need a picture of a uh, Whippet slash Jack Russell because can I tell you something? Jack Russells are my least favorite kind of dog. Whippets are my favorite. What? They're very similar looking. Uh, <laughs> well, you tell me what you think he looks more like. I'll go get. I'll go get him. I hope it's a whippet, but you know. Ah. That's so crazy. I can't. I don't even believe that. That's like literally favorite, least favorite. That's so bizarre that you have a favorite and least favorite. Well, okay. So the only reason I don't love Jack Russells is because. Um, Oh, come here. And that's like the Ren Tin Tin dog, Jack Russell, right? Is that oh, a Ren Tin no, Tin? It's Eddie from Frasier. Oh, oh, is that the little white curly dogs? Oh, okay. Yeah, oh. the like brown on the face, like, and they usually they're usually very energetic and annoying. Oh yeah, yeah, like nonstop energy. Yes, and so like I've just been like annoyed by so many. Where I mean, obviously, I don't actually have a not favorite dog. <laughs> like I love them all. I don't hate any dogs. But... No, I really don't. But if I had to absolutely pick one, that's what it would be. And then like my favorite dog is between a Whippet and a uh, Great Dane. I don't even know what a Whippet is. It's like the cutest thing ever. Oh my God. Oh my God, it's so cute. This is Tucker. I think he looks more like a Russell Terrier or a Whippet. I don't know. I don't, so I think his face is more Jack Russell and he's so freaking cute. Oh my God. <laughs> And his body is more whippet. He's really well behaved. He's, like, he's so cool. look at him. Joe was, yeah. Oh, I can see that. Oh, my Jessica Alba story, right, Mark? Tell yeah. it. Oh, we have to tell the Derek Cheater story too. Okay. Tell I it. met Jessica Alba. <laughs> uh, I was in New York City, in New York City, very hungover after a night of drinking. I think it was a, must have been a Sunday at brunch at some <laughs> fancy brunch spot in the West Village. Ryan loves his brunch. Loves it. And uh, she was sitting at another table. And uh, my buddies dared me to go ask her for a picture. And I went over to her and I tapped her on the shoulder. I was like, hey, can I get a picture with you? She goes, sorry, I can't, I can't remember exactly what she said. I think she said something like, I don't do pictures. And I said, well, you don't do good movies either. <laughs> That's the best thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's roll that into your Derek Jeter story. Traveling to Vegas um, for the first national championship yeah for the florida's first national championship under urban meyer they played in glendale arizona so we went to vegas uh i think back then it was on a monday right that's think that sounds right i think yeah, so. for monday. <laughs> yeah it was on monday so we went for the weekend to vegas you know it was a two and a half hour drive or something like that to phoenix so we went to vegas for the weekend with a bunch of buddies um and one of the nights we ended up at a uh, club at like 3 or 4 a.m and uh a rod was there tigers had just uh it was back when the Tigers were good. It was like towards the, the later end of their uh, baseball run in the playoffs. They'd gone to the World Series a few times. Um, and I don't know why I thought this, but I just started calling him uh, Derek Jeter. Like like that's who he was. Like, hey, Derek Jeter, man, you're my favorite Yankee. I'm from Michigan. You're from Michigan. Kalamazoo. <laughs> it, at first he ignored me, but I kept doing it. He was like, dude, you're both real. That is not funny. I'm like, dude, you played so good in the playoffs against the Tigers. You're probably doing it for the hometown, right? Derek Jeter, Derek. And I think I was on him for, I don't remember. I don't remember how long, but eventually he kicked me out. <laughs> I wouldn't stop calling Derek Jeter. Oh my God. Wait, so you really didn't know it was not Derek Jeter? Oh, I knew it was A-Rod. Oh, okay. I was a big baseball fan. So I knew that like, although A-Rod was a better player, Derek Jeter got more attention. He was Mr. Yankee and A-Rod was always second fiddle. And in, and in, in Derek Jeter's defense, A-Rod was terrible in the playoffs. 
especially against the Tigers. I think it was like over 30. It was so unclutch <laughs> that it was ridiculous. That, what, the one year they won the World Series, I think, was the only time you played well in the yeah that A-Rod played well in the, the playoffs. Was, he, if he had not done that, he would have went down in like history as probably like one the of biggest the flop. choke players of all yeah. time. But yeah. because he did that, people were able to move beyond it. But now he's dating J-Lo, and I hate her. Even though, I mean, look, I want to know what she does. I'm sure what she does is not cheap. You know what? I got to tell you, I would sell my soul to look like that in 15 years. So whatever it is, I don't care. I'm going to do it once I figure it out. You got to get a movie where you're a stripper and you just dance on the pole for like six months. I would do that in a second. Well, every time I see Derek or every time I see A-Rod, I like to think that that, that memory still haunts him. <laughs> I'm sure that it does. I am sure that every single time that guy gets missed, like, he's always like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I'm Derek Jeter. Oh, God, it's going to happen again. <laughs> definitely made a lasting I'm about social anxiety. <laughs> I'm never going. All right, so should we talk about this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're only an hour and 13 minutes in. Okay. We have, like, right. 10 minutes of tape. Okay, so speaking about interesting travel stories, Ryan, you have probably one of the best ones I've ever heard. Uh, and you know which one I'm talking about since we just discussed it. <laughs> Before I flub the in intro. <laughs> the one where I totally screwed it up. <laughs> Go. <laughs> so I've always wanted to uh, same day a vacation where you basically just day of, decide a place to go and go. Um, and I had had some friends fly up to Chicago. I was in law school at the time in Chicago. We uh, had a good weekend in Chicago and I don't know if all of us, but most of us had left our credit cards at, at the Cubby Bear. Shout out to the Cubby Bear. Is that a bar? It's yeah, a, it's like in Wrigleyville. Right? Wrigley. Yeah, famous bar at Wrigley Field. So you had such a good night the night before that you all left your credit cards there? Yeah. Running a tab and forgot to pay. One of those nights. Yep. I mean, okay. Cubby Bear is famous. I've seen Eddie, I've seen Eddie Money do an impro impromptu concert there. So the, the Cubby, Cubby Bear is pretty, because it's right next to Wrigley, so sometimes you our- Eddie Money? Eddie Money, yeah. He's from, uh, like, one town over. Really? I think I think Eddie Money always is the first show at um, uh, DTE Theater too. Like every summer, he kicks off the summer. Eddie Money, like, and that's like our big outdoor theater in Detroit. What's and, that song? What's the song? I don't know. Two tickets to paradise. <laughs> yeah. <okay. laughs> Isn't, that, <laughs> Isn't that like the perfect intro to the song? <laughs> Two tickets to paradise. Night, not the same night, but I think he opened for somebody at Wrigley. People play concerts in and around Wrigley, and they do like imp impromptu pop up concerts at the Cubby Bear. Anyway. Cool Sunday, we go back to the Cubby Bear to retrieve our credit cards. And the same guy, we had no recollection of this, but the same guy was working the bar. And he's like, oh, you guys, let me buy, <laughs> let me, let me buy you guys a shot. You're not going to be happy with your credit card bill. Let me buy you a shot before I give you your credit card bill. <laughs> Last night. But we were still kind of drunk. So we're like, yeah, sure, that's fine. <laughs> and uh, my, buddies had their, my buddies had their suitcase. And they were, they were going from there to the airport to fly back to Charlotte, where they were from. They are supposed to fly back to Charlotte later that afternoon. There's four of us, two of us that live there, two of us that were visiting from Charlotte, and we were trying to get them drunk that day so they'd miss their flight. Who is we? You and, and yeah, my, buddy, my, my law school buddy. Okay. Yeah, buddy. So we, we, he gets us the first shot, we order drinks, we have another shot. We end up hanging out at the Cubby Bear for a few hours. And uh, I don't know exactly how this happened, but I just decided that a good way to get them to miss their flight and not go back to Charlotte would be to promise us to go on a trip somewhere that day. <laughs> And I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Super Troopers, but they do this in uh, Super Troopers where they uh, they claim that they met Kiss and Kiss flew them to Jamaica for the night and they partied all night and then Kiss flew them home. And that story was stuck in my head. So I was like, you guys, if I could find tickets, would you fly to Jamaica with me tonight? Oh, my God. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, I guess. And one of my buddies had his laptop because he was about to go home. And so he pulled his laptop out. We are so drunk we couldn't spell Jamaica. Oh, my God. We are so drunk we couldn't spell Jamaica. <laughs> Uh, the next best thing we could come up with was Bermuda. <laughs> and I, I think, I don't know how it happened, but the stars aligned. And there was a flight like three hours later or four hours later uh, to Bermuda. And it wasn't that expensive. It was like 300 bucks round trip. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Wait, so did you pay for everybody's flight or? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, the deal was like, I buy all the flights and then they like, you mm -hmm. know, buy drinks and food while we're there. Totally fair. So I buy these flights and we did not think this through at all. This happened before we realized it after, but um, they didn't have their passports and the flights that we bought had a like 11 hour layover in Charlotte, oh. which is where they're from. Oh. 
Oh, well, that, there we go. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure we knew before. I tell people we didn't know. Yeah, but, I was just about to say, that's a weird coincidence. I can't, I can't tell you one way or the other. But we had to rush. We had to, like, pack our shit, close our tabs, run back to the, uh, run back to my apartment. That's a, like, that's a chore. He's like, we had to close our tabs. <laughs> our, our two days worth of tabs, yesterday's yeah. and today. We're yeah. out of to close tabs. We close everything out, run back, fill a backpack up, go to the airport, and we're off at, like, 7 p.m. on a Sunday to Bermuda. That's so cool. Same <laughs> man's in Charlotte, and my buddies are like, okay, we got to go home. We got to get our passports. A whole nother, this story is so crazy. A whole nother uh, side of the story is one of the guys had a DUI court date the next day. <laughs> Monday morning at like 8 a.m. And the flight left at like 11. So he's he's thinking, oh, guys, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I don't know if I'm going to make the second leg. I, I really should go to this court date. I should really go. But come on, man. I bought you a ticket to Bermuda. You got to go. <laughs> Long story short. Uh, and he goes home and goes to bed because he's going to make his court date. Sure. And he and so we wake up the next day, we rush to the airport, and we, we haven't heard from him. We're sitting at the gate, haven't heard from him, and I still remember it like it was yesterday. All of a sudden, I know where we see him running down the uh the the aisle at the airport with a full suit on. The full suit on. It's like I made it, guys, I made it. <laughs> My lawyer got me off, and uh, I can go to Bermuda with you guys. <laughs> so then we fly to Bermuda, it was a Monday at like uh, you know, early in the morning. We get there around lunch. We have no idea what we're doing. And, uh, yeah, because you had no hotel or anything, right? No, but on the plane on the way there, the plane was pretty empty. There were only like uh, a dozen people on the plane. We met a local, and he uh, he ripped out the map from one of the the uh, magazines on the plane, and he wrote in handwriting on the map like all these hot spots to go to and like what time to go to them. And we carried that map around with us the whole time and just went to all those spots. Like a year later, my buddy framed that map and gave it to me as a present. Oh, that's awesome! I still have it somewhere. I don't have it hanging, but. <laughs> have it somewhere we hit up the beaches all the bars happened to be when they had their annual uh their biggest annual festival all week so there were a bunch of cruise ships there we partied it was crazy and then and then that night uh i wanted to gamble so we tried to sneak onto a cruise ship <laughs> and uh we got onto the belly of the ship we got onto the belly of the ship before they realized that uh we were not guests and they kicked us off yeah. See, everybody, this is why I love this story, by the way. It includes every mode of travel <laughs> that anybody is interested in. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> and, and they kicked us off, and then we found out that that ship, like, three or four hours later, took off for Norway. So, oh my God. it would be really good that we didn't that we didn't make it on. That would have been a way more expensive flight coming home. I know. Yeah. We would have been stuck on a Norwegian cruise ship. It was a Norwegian cruise line, but we were just thinking about gambling. We slept on the beach that night. Didn't even think about getting a hotel. Just slept on the beach. You just like, okay, so you like went to the beach. You were obviously drunk. Oh, yeah, super drunk. I mean, the whole trip, like I have all these memories because I'm retelling the stories, but I don't actually remember. I, good thing I've been retelling the stories so many times because I don't, <laughs> we didn't really sleep. We each other in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's so many stories in between that that I could tell you. Like at one point on the first beach we went to, the really famous beach, we met uh, some locals and we, didn't, we hadn't booked a hotel or anything. We just had a backpack with some clothes. We had no plans. We just went. No plans. Nothing booked. We're like, crap, we haven't showered in a while. So <laughs> we, the locals were like, oh, come up to our house. Meet the family. You guys are hilarious. You're awesome. <laughs> so everybody but me and this one local girl that I was chatting up, they all get into a, a cab and they take off. She's like, oh, you come with me on the back of my moped. <laughs> so I get on the back of a moped with this girl who I met like an hour before. <laughs> And she's taking me up the mountains of Bermuda, just whining through these like mountain towns. All these, yeah, all these people are looking at me like, who, who is this guy? You know, obviously uh, not from around here. We get to their house. It's a big family. And uh, they're so nice to us. And they're offering us uh, beer and stuff. And we start taking showers. And I think we got through like one and a half showers. Like one guy finished his shower. And Jesse, my buddy, was still completely covered in soap. And the water stopped working. He came out of the bathroom. And he was like, guys, the water stopped working. And the girls were like, Oh yeah, our shower comes from a tent on the top of the house. So when the water stops, no more, no more showers. How did they not tell you? That? Like rain. It's like it's rain, rain, right? Yeah. It's, like, it's rain and then fil they filter it. They probably told us, but right. we're right. blocking out drunk. Right. So so the mom gets mad and kicks us out. He's still covered in soap. <laughs> <laughs> so we're walking down these winding roads in in uh, Bermuda, because uh, there's no cabs up there. You had to walk back. We need to walk back, yeah. A savage. <laughs> we ended up at the festival and we partied. We went to this really fancy dinner. 
uh, we went out, uh, we went out on the beach and party with a bunch of people on the beach who had jet skis, swimming through jet skis, jet ski rides in the in the bay. It was awesome. And then we passed out on the beach. We just like, like, oh, the night's over. Everybody's gone. It's gonna fall asleep on the beach. <laughs> so we had to take the bus from the beach to the airport back the next day. We didn't have any money, so we had to borrow money from some lady who was on our way to work. Because <laughs> we were all out of cash and we we're on the I was, like, I always wondered, like, what are the chances of a stranger getting money from me? I. Like what did you say? You may not have been the first person we asked, but she just was yeah. like, we got to shut these guys up. It was all people that were in the hospitality industry going to work, dressed really nicely and sober, and us four. <laughs> and reeking like booze, as hungover as you can imagine, on the city bus, on the way from one end of the island to the airport on the other end of the island. <laughs> and two of my buddies, the ones from Charlotte, halfway through, forced the bus driver to pull over and just ran off the bus and started puking. Bus driver was like, screw those guys, shut the door and just kept going. <laughs> this was, we didn't have cell phones. There were no cell phones. <laughs> so me and my law school buddy were like, uh, do you want to stay a few more days? Because our flight was that day. Do you want to stay a few more days? We're like, yeah, this is ridiculous. We're in Bermuda. We're in law school. You can skip a few days of class. So we went back to the main city and got a nice hotel. Like, we're going to spend money on a hotel. So we got a nice hotel. Didn't see from those two guys or hear from them for like a week. <laughs> Because we were we stayed in Bermuda for like three or four more days, and then we didn't we didn't actually make phone calls until we got back to the U.S. So they ran off into a field and were puking, and we have no idea what happened to them. Wait, this is free cell phones? Well, uh, you didn't have international phones back then. Yeah, we may have had cell phones, but they definitely didn't work in Bermuda. <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, pre cell phone, that's all. Because this was probably what, what was this, like 2007, 2008? Yeah, I think it was like the first version of the iPhone, maybe. Yeah, so okay. there was no international calling back then. No, I, we, we, were, we were spending so much money, we're like, we're not going to call anybody. Of course, of course. <laughs> I mean, the card was maxed out. Like, I mean, if these guys are dead on the side of the road at this point, it's not going to save me $8 for everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I need that. I just spent like twelve hundred dollars to fly here, but this eight dollars, man. I don't know. I think we tried to call them from the hotel, and they didn't answer. We tried once. Yeah, like, like an hour later, you're like, "Hey, maybe, maybe we should attempt to call." So their story that we heard a week later was after they got done puking, they went to the side of the road and hitchhiked to the airport, and they got to the airport, and. uh their flight wasn't until that night. Like our flight was later that night. So they just, they just laid and slept in a field for like four or five hours and then made the flight and flew back to Charlotte and went to work the next day. What? They both had jobs. So what's funny is they both had jobs. They're supposed to be to work on Monday. And what they told their boss on Sunday, rewind to the Chicago, is that they'd won a contest to go to Bermuda. But the only way to redeem it- Arby, is, Arby's, Arby's. Yeah. Flew them to Bermuda. They told their boss the only way to redeem it is to go right now. We go right now. <laughs> The only way to redeem it, you got to go today. And they both worked at a brewery. They worked at a brewery, so their their boss was either like, yeah. I need you or whatever. Go, you know. Right, right, right. Okay, so they're not like uh, finance guys. No. They <laughs> both worked at a brewery. Wow. So, okay, so they made their flight, and you guys got they, to they, they truly did the one-day, uh, completely out of nowhere trip to Bermuda. Me and my buddy stayed and went snorkeling and toured the island and did all kinds of real touristy stuff. But for one night, it was complete chaos. Do you think that we could get the miles to memories or at least a crew to do something like that? I'd do it. I, I wouldn't sleep on a beach, but I'd do like a uh, book it tonight, fly, fly wherever. Yeah, we should all like meet up in like, uh, like New York and then yeah. just, and just be like, all right, what's the cheapest international flight we can find? And everybody search. And then you just go wherever you find it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I would love to do it again. All right, are you coming? Oh yeah. It's a riot. It's one, yeah. of my favorite, one of my favorite trips I've ever done. I have so many memories from it. What I took away from the story is that Bermuda people are amazing because they put up with. <laughs> we were up at the top of the mountain and we, we were at some house with the locals. I mean, they had a tent on the top of their house for rainwater for a shower. We got kicked out because we used it all. <laughs> That's the best. The poor guy covered it so up. <laughs> like, oh, you guys, the water's not working anymore. Let me yeah, tell you a I think I have it. Oh, I hope I have it. Oh, God. Can you imagine like lathering up and then not being able to rinse off? I would die. <laughs> It doesn't seem like the worst thing ever. And then be like, hey, uh, you have to the water ran out. And they're like, yeah, we're not going to be able to shower until rain happens again. Thanks. <laughs> you assholes. <laughs> <laughs>
meanwhile, like my favorite thing went, oh my God. So Steve asked me if I would go camping. <laughs> Not really? glamping, but actual camping. No, like camping tent. <laughs> I'm not doing that, just so we're clear. <laughs> Like glamping, I could see. Glamping looks cool. No. Camping? No. <laughs> uh, Ryan, we're just talking about camping. What camping. are your thoughts about camping? I uh, know a lot about camping. I've camped a lot in my life. I actually looked into going camping week of the fourth, but a lot of the campgrounds are still closed. So that sucks. All the good campings. But it, I still got to call and cancel not, our hotel. I don't or, think uh, you know, use the term bougie camping. So I don't, I don't know if it's for you. Glamping. Glamping. No. Glamping is. No, let me tell you something about glamping. It's totally fake. Doesn't exist. Uh, I think it does on safaris, like high-end safaris. I think no. glamping's like a legit thing where no. they'll like they'll like make you like the best steak ever, and you have like this like princessy type campground type. Like basically, if you were the king in Game of Thrones, like that's what your tent looks like. Right. Yeah. That does. That sounds like a possibly doable safari. Oh, yeah. Like, you said they make you like you have other people there taking care of you. <laughs> Yeah, on a safari, yeah. As far from camping as it gets. <laughs> yeah, it's just not my thing. Also, I refuse to go to safari because um, of the chemicals that you have to, like, soak your clothing in. Oh, like DEET and stuff, you mean? Yeah, like, you're coming back with cancer. Hmm. That's a good point. <laughs> I never thought about that. We do that in northern Michigan. I'll put down DEET. I don't want to get bit. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't want to get bit either. So, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I get a conundrum. I get you it. wear, like, one of those nets. <laughs> I would do that. That I would do <laughs> I just, I just read about an alternative to DEET. It's as effective, but not uh, cancer-causing. What is it? I can't remember what it's called. Oh. It was on uh, the wirecutter.com. Best, wire best insect repellent. You can look it up. Okay. I mean, all right. Let's be honest. Uh, the only insects that I'm coming into contact with are in my backyard. So. I know it was really late into the episode, but I did have one thing that I wanted to say that I thought. Oh, we want to see it. Yeah. Now, at this point, we're just talking about mosquitoes. I read today that Michigan, Mark, you probably know about this, is passing some loosened up alcohol laws. So um, we're passing these alcohol laws that allow you to buy drinks to go, all drinks to go. So like you can buy a, a mixed drink and take it to go, as well as what they call like social zones, like drinking zones. So you can drink in certain areas uh, outside of the bar's uh, parcel, like the bar's property. Whoa, that's cool. And making it easier to have like block parties. So yeah. my sense is that That's really cool. A lot of states are doing this to uh, to get the restaurants back in business and making money. Yeah, and still keep so, people outdoor if they don't have an outdoor area and stuff. Yeah, I think a good travel-related post or research would be to look into what states are passing these and why the good ones would be better states to go to after they pass for like drinking like Bourbon Street, where you wouldn't usually be able to do in Detroit, when you maybe will be able to do in Detroit soon. Yeah. Yeah, or just go to the Lemon Bar in Jacksonville where it's outdoors anyway. Oh, man, I'm so jealous. Why'd you have to bring that up? <laughs> that was my last trip because we went to Jacksonville. <laughs> and that's where Ryan lived for a couple years after he graduated uh, undergrad. Yep. I sent him pictures. I like went with my dad because my parents live in Jacksonville. So that's why we were down there. I did a, gets... a girl that looked nothing like Maria. <laughs> <laughs> a whole other story. Oh, yeah. But um, uh, so I, I, my dad gets home from work and stuff. I'm like, hey, do you want to go grab a beer? I've been wanting to check out this Lemon Bar. Uh, Ryan said it's awesome, and I had found it like it was one of the hotels that we thought about. We were gonna spend like a date oh, night. Yeah, there's a pool there. Yeah, there's a pool there. There's a hotel. It's right on the beach. It's uh, it, like it's on the border of uh, what are the two towns? Atlantic Beach and Jacksonville Beach. Or Neptune. Yeah, Neptune. Neptune. Yeah, Neptune and uh, oh, Atlantic. I was, I was like, oh, Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you? it's like this. It's like this. It's like this hotel oh. right on the border, and there's like this little cute downtown that has bars and restaurants and stuff. So we were thinking about doing that as our date night while my, my parents watched the kids. We ended up going to uh, St. Augustine instead, which is an awesome city too, awesome town. Um, so when my dad came home from work, I'm like, hey, do you want to go grab a beer? Let's go to this lemon bar. And I sent Ryan basically like travel porn. <laughs> I <used to> <laughs> We're sending him pictures of the bar because he used to go there all the time. I'm like, hey, here, here. <laughs> I'm like a happy hour like three days a week. <laughs> Wait, three days a week? Oh, so that was like your spot. This was like right after undergrad. So I was still transitioning to a real world. Uh-huh, yeah. Still a lot of weekdays for me. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it's a cool bar though. Like, it's outdoor. You, you're looking at the pool of the hotel, and then there's like the beach. There's mounds of sand, and the beach is like right there. Huge outdoor area. So it's it's one of the better bars in the Jacksonville area that I've seen. So definitely. I don't think I've ever been to Jacksonville. Jacksonville Airport. I love Jacksonville Airport too. It's like really? what? it's nice, but it's not busy. Airport. Jacksonville is uh, underrated. It's sneaky because all around it are there's a lot of cool stuff around it. South is yeah. St. Augustine, which is a really cool town. Mark and Super cool. Yeah, super cool. And St. Augustine, uh, Flagstar College. What it, what is it called? Uh, what's the college there? Flag, Flagler. 
Flagler. Fla Flagler. Yeah. The, the <laughs> college has like, like pull, Google Flagler College. Like nobody really knows about it. And it's a super expensive um, liberal arts school, but like it has the most beautiful grounds you'll ever see. And the buildings like inside, like it just looks amazing. It's amazing. And then St. Augustine School, it's kind of like a mini, it's kind of like a mini Bourbon Street. Like when you walk down the main street, like bars, restaurants, shops, except for there's no urine anywhere. And it's clean. I was gonna say, is it maybe just a little cleaner. <laughs> oh, it's it's super clean. It's super clean, but like the same type of vibe. And, uh, you know, it's all along the water. So, and then all the beach towns, because Jacksonville is a little inland. But once you get to the beach, there's all these little beach towns. They all kind of have their own personality. Cool. Yeah. You go a little north of that, and then you get some really nice, nice <laughs> islands with some golf courses and country clubs. <laughs> yeah, you can even go up to uh, like St. Simon's Islands. St. Simon's Island is only a couple hours, which is cool. Jekyll Island, stuff like that. So you have a lot of opportunity when you're in Jacksonville. Daytona Beach is only a couple hours away, like an hour and a half away. So it's really probably the most undervalued area of Florida, I would say. Wow. Kingsville, if you want to go to a football game. Yeah. I, I mean, I like this, like, I'm sold. Like, I need to, like, yeah. what, three nights? Are you a big Halloween person? No. I don't, do, I don't believe in decorating for, like, if there was not one Halloween. You just see your Christmas tree. <laughs> no, this is, that's, this is a good thing. Because every year, not most years, I ask Mark to go to the world's largest outdoor cocktail party with me. And he can't go because it's always on Halloween. He's got his kids. So Halloween's a big, uh, this was like the first year I probably could have gone, and it's not going to happen. I am so your girl. So every year, Florida and Georgia, which are two. I'm not regions, wearing a costume. You don't have to. No, you can just wear Florida gear. Cool. Florida and Georgia <laughs> play on Halloween every year at what they call the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. And it's just this huge party in Jacksonville. It's always on neutral site, and a million people come. It's just a crazy party for the whole weekend. It's the My parents are already there. So I, we always want to, like, do it. It's the best. The best football game you could go to is that one, in my that opinion. Sounds awesome. Yeah, I don't believe in decorating or holidays or anything like that. It's just like it's not that like I, I can't like I can enjoy it if somebody else does it, but I'm not going to. Right. Because like, it's crazy. Things to do. <laughs> it's crazy. Like just south of Jacksonville Beach, because there's like uh, Atlantic Beach and Neptune Beach, and then Jack's Beach, and then what is it? Ponte. What's below that? Ponte Verde. Ponte Verde. Oh, yeah. yeah. That beach, like oh, if you yeah. go there, the sta the sand changes completely, and when you're driving to St. Augustine, like on that main highway. There's all these like turnoffs that you can go to the beach and it's public beach and there's like nobody there. Like you go you go to any of these pull offs and there's like four people there. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, and the best place to stop is like private. There's like this one turnoff that's right next to a gas station. So you can go in there and buy like a drink, like you know, like a, a margarita mix or a beer or whatever. They give you a paper bag. You walk over to the beach. There's I love a couple like that. Yeah, there's like a mile stretch where there's no homes and the beach turns into like all shells. And you, that's where you can find like shark teeth and stuff. And you can just sit there and chill yeah. and have a drink on your way to St. Augustine. And it it's pretty cool. St. Jacksonville is undervalued for sure. Can I tell you a funny dog, uh, yeah. dog story from this past weekend? So usually every every year we have a rollerblade biking bar crawl in Lansing with friends. Mark's been invited multiple times. Has never been. I can't rollerblade. I can't. Biking. Roller oh, biking. biking. I quit rollerblading two years ago. <laughs> I would die. I would die so quick. <laughs> Basically just bar crawl around the city on bikes and, and some people rollerblade. <laughs> Um, but we couldn't do it this year because, you know, the bars and restaurants won't, they're not going to take a, a bar crawl right now. Right. So instead we went up North to my, uh, my parents' uh, cottage up in Taos and, um, we're up there on Friday. No, yes. Friday night. Most people had already shown up, um, except the two guys that were coming weren't there yet. So it was me and a bunch of girls <laughs> and, and our dogs. <laughs> and so, uh, Tucker's background, my cousin tells me is that he got him at an animal shelter. The animal shelter told him that they found him living in the woods on his own, like feeding off of like chipmunks and, and rats and stuff. Yay, adopt don't shop, woo! No, like, they're like, this guy was living in the wild and we found him and brought him and tried to like cool. bring him back to uh, domestication and uh, took a little while. So we adopted him, natural born killer. So we're out on the pond. Oh, oh shoot, that reminds me of the last story you have to tell us and then I swear I will let you guys go. <laughs> what was it, like a week ago, Mark, where uh, we had a situation with the possum? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we cut the whole goose story. This is the better story. Oh, this is a good story. I'm going to, I'll include no, it. No, I'm kidding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you the goose story. Story. oh, I forgot we were doing this. For, I was just telling you the story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we were talking about, you were talking about your possum story. And I told you about Ryan's possum story on Thanksgiving, what, like two years ago or something like that? Oh, yeah, JoJo, her last hurrah. <laughs> yes, okay, so a little background. Um, obviously, we all love our pets more than anything. Uh, mine is a big um great Dane labrador retriever mix rescue just you know like the sweetest thing you ever met in your entire life yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> so i go um, okay so i go to let him in the other night and i see that he's like 
nuzzling his head against the ground and he's like throwing his ball in the air and like all these like crazy antics. And then I realized it's not a ball. It's like an animal, <laughs> like a real life animal. Oh my God. Yeah. And he is so excited. Like, and I have a cat, so it's not like he sees everything as prey, but he's the sweetest thing ever. Anyway. Um, is it Spencer? So, yeah, Spencer. <laughs> I love the name Spencer. Don't yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Spencer Howard, if you're watching this. Sorry, cousin Spencer. <laughs> His name is too, anyway. My Spencer's so much cuter. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, yeah. So anyway, so like, of course, I now feel terrible because I'm like, well, what situation is this poor animal in outside? Because I'm a huge animal person. She sends me this message. And I'm like, you know, it probably wasn't dead. Let me tell you, Ryan. We were at Thanksgiving at uh, my player two's mom's house. Player two. You know, all sitting on the floor playing a board game. Uh, she's got like a, a sliding glass door to her backyard. Jojo, who's 18 at the time, very old dog. Um, <laughs> Apparently they're not very athletic possums. No, no. My mom <laughs> wants her in and my mom's like, oh, Jojo, you brought your toy inside because they take their their uh, their toys in and outside. Yeah. And, uh, she walks up right next to my stepdad, like standing this close to his head. Right here. <laughs> and he looks over and there is a, a full size adult possum in her mouth. <laughs> And everybody freaks out, starts running around the house. <laughs> and she's just standing there like, what? My greatest accomplishment. <laughs> yes. Like, look what I did. Is no, I, I did this for you. I still got it. I still got it. I mean, she's killed a lot of squirrels and bunnies and things like that in her life, but it's been a while. And Doc's still sitting there. Like, he's old. He's like, you know, late 60s. And he does not get up. Everybody else is freaking out and running around. And he's hard of hearing. And he's just sitting there. What's going on, guys? I don't get it. What's going on? <laughs> That is not a stuffed animal. That's a live animal. <laughs> like slowly gets up. He finally dropped it and I had to put it back outside. I, did, I just gently set it on the deck and waited because I know they play dead. And then a half an hour later, it got up and wandered back under the deck and it was fine. State trips, do you have planned for the rest of this year? I don't have any books, but really. really um, all camping. Camping yeah. in, camping in Connecticut. Yeah, um, all of my trips are like last minute usually anyway, unless it's like a really big one. Me and Ryan, are, we, did you book uh, Vegas in October? Did I booked, you book that yet? I booked the flight there. Yeah, so that's like, that's my next trip because I had to burn that voucher, so I just booked it. Because um, that voucher that voucher goes away after a few weeks, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, what so. Kind of, Ryan, what's your out of state travel itinerary look like? Just that one trip. Um, I have a few in-state travel plans. We still got to go to Beaver Island. We need to do that. I've canceled bachelor parties that were supposed to be in other places. So Nashville and um, what was the other one? Chicago. But they're both going to be in-state. So we're just going to like Traverse City or Grand Rapids. Yeah. But no, we need. Okay. Anybody watching this, Google Beaver Island, Michigan. And me and Ryan, we got to go there this summer at some point. Like end of July, August. Yeah. Ryan, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for sacrificing your Friday nights, even though we really had a good time, I think. Thank you guys, Ryan. We better have you back on. That was really fun. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Yeah, thanks for coming, man. Appreciate it. Thank you both. Bye. Bye. Enjoy. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>